portable, beautiful and powered by Android TV. Makes you wonder whether the new Mi Smart Project 2 is really that great. And I'll make sure to show you in the next minutes. Let's inspect! So, welcome back. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael and what we do here is inspect cool, fresh tech. And that's what we are testing today. The Mi Smart Projector 2. And as you can already guess, yeah, that's the logical continuation of the already very popular Mi Smart Projector series. It's rather minor iteration on top of what uh, Xiaomi have released a couple of years ago. However, some significant steps towards perfection and whether they reached it we're going to discuss throughout this episode and you know me that I'm a fan of these small portable nice looking devices and uh, this this definitely qualifies as such now a disclaimer at the start I got the unit for free from Xiaomi as part of uh, one of their mystery box events uh, you can see the box out there and a uh, video about that you probably are going to see on the Xiaomi official channel and I'll link it in the description below the video but for this particular episode no strings attached meaning that in this episode, we're gonna see all the good, also all the bad sides. Being a second generation, it's already somewhat a mature technology and Xiaomi have made sure to optimize everything that wasn't entirely right with the previous generation. There's a slight upgrade in the processor speed, but also significant boost in terms of features and performance, thanks to the entire chipset upgrade. So, the difference between this me smart projector and other devices of uh, similar scale is quite obvious. This thing here, besides projecting, has smartness inside. Think of the functionality of your smartphone, you know, integrated inside. Or it's more like uh, the Android TV operating system injected inside. So yeah, that's quite capable. Not that there aren't other projectors of this type. In fact, there are. But uh, two major significant differences inside here we have certified by Google Android TV. And I can think of two major reasons why you would prefer this. A, because you have access to Google Play Store and all the content for the Android TV edition. Secondly, Netflix. And it's genuine working app from Netflix. You can update it from Google Play Store and it's going to work fine even if you update. And given the fact we run 1080p resolution, it does make a difference compared to other TV boxes where they use a workaround and it's totally not a user-friendly solution. Um, good to know that if you're seeking for a bit brighter picture, Xiaomi are going to release this in two iterations. Well, basically you have this uh, regular uh, Projector 2, but there also is the Pro Edition. Unboxing the units. And I was so happy to feel the typical Mi devices packaging. Soft to the touch, a bit of specs on the box itself, the design and languages may vary depending on the region. I believe this unit will be available in the United States too, because of the FCC certification it has passed. There are, by the way, some really interesting internal photos that you can find in the regulatory database. So, here's the user guide as a starter. If you're setting up a projector for the first time, make sure to spend some time actually reading it. Will come really handy, especially when it comes to controlling. There's the main unit. Cool design. Xiaomi have well integrated a lot of small holes in the back side of the unit so that there's enough airflow. As you may know, this is of extreme importance about projectors. Therefore, never block the rear side of this one. At the first sight, we can see the front area, which is also quite stylish. And a few ports on the rear and a power button on the top. I think this device looks so stylish that you'd never guess it's actually a projector. Let's see about the specs. Most important is of course the optics. Here we have LED light with DLP technology, 500 ounce lumen brightness and 1080p projecting resolution, throw ratio 1 to 2 by 1, 60 to 120 inch screen size, multi-angle keystone correction. It's powered by AMLogic T972 system on a chip, has 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs local storage, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, a headphone jack, USB 2.0 and HDMI port on the back, so well equipped for delivering truly great multimedia experience. It combines the qualities of Android TV box with small and stylish projector. Performance is not amazingly fascinating, but just about right to have good looking animations and scroll well between the screens. If we involve some gaming, things will of course look differently because in terms of performance, it lacks the performance of Nvidia Shield TV for instance. But I guess Xiaomi never really had the intention to present this device as a gaming projector. 
In terms of interface, this is the standard look of Google's Android TV, and unfortunately lately it's hardly customizable. As you will notice, this one has all the certifications that are needed to have unrestricted access to most streaming services and the full Google Play content. There are a few nice options to fine-tune the picture of the Beamer. I need to underline that the default configuration is close to perfect. Yes, there are some settings that you can fine-tune. Uh, clearly, some of them could improve the picture in different situations, but I've been sticking to the defaults ever since the beginning and I'm super happy about the image quality. Besides that, there are a few other modes that you can run this projector in. One of them, interestingly, you can run it as a Bluetooth speaker because inside it has two 5 watt full range speakers. So uh, the quality is actually good and it's certified by Dolby Atmos, meaning that the sound quality is going to be significantly better than some other devices. Don't expect like disco cool sound and deep bass, but I would say the sound is not bad at all. Just hear it out. Besides cool sound, Mi Smart Projector 2 luckily is rather quiet when it comes to the fan operation. You know that cooling of these bodies is quite important and it is quieter than the fan of my laptop. I believe so far you've had enough time to build up your opinion whether the projected image quality is good enough. It is indeed one of the best looking devices in its class and offers substantially brighter and crisper image as opposed to most other smaller projectors. I've put it side by side with my favorite can-sized nebula capsule and as expected image quality is in a different league. Major contribution to this is the bigger optics and of course the much brighter lamp. Since the unit has a quarter-inch mount at the bottom, it's so easy to install it on various tripods, or you can simply put it on a table and direct it towards a wall. The darker the wall, the better it is, or you may just pick a budget-friendly projecting screen which absorbs the light in a much different way and is of course a lot better solution than just a wall. A totally favorite feature is the auto-adjustment mode. You don't have to do anything, just as soon as Mi Small Projector 2 senses that it has moved or the image is not optimal, it will adjust the autofocus and make sure that the shapes are back to normal and that there aren't any distortions. This is invaluable because it saves so much time that you otherwise spend on moving and adapting the image. There aren't too many advanced settings such as lumen control or manual shape correction or other fine tuning. But I think the point of this projector is to anyways be super easy and fun to use. Minimum effort, maximum impact or image quality. Oh, and we also have a great remote, very ergonomic. And here the button, a button for Netflix, for live TV, other controls. It's voice enabled, so you can speak to Google Assistant at any point of time. And that's going to be a best friend, especially when you do some typing and when you're searching in Google Play Store or YouTube or whatever it is. So yeah, definitely a great remote. I very much like it because inside it's powered by two AAA batteries, replaceable. So um, thank you Xiaomi for letting us easily change the batteries. Now, in order for this review to be complete, since we have covered most of the strong sides, it's time to talk about the drawbacks. The first thing I'm going to start with, you wouldn't like to hear that, but I have experienced some software issues. Luckily, nothing too serious but enough to get me annoyed at the start especially because during the setup the only way I was able to uh, log in with my Google account was by doing the setup through the Google app on my smartphone. And not that it's bad, it's actually the simpler way, but if I try right now to log in with another Google account it gives me a weird error message and the even weirder part is that Google sends me confirmation email that I actually successfully logged in. So I don't know what the issue there is. Didn't try a factory reset yet, probably that's going to be the next troubleshooting step, but definitely something that I hope to see improved with the next software update. The other big thing I see as a challenge or complication is this charging brick, which I really hoped is going to be USB based, but it's not. You can see that there's a proprietary connector. And now that you can't find one, especially one that is running on 19 volts, 3.42 amps or whatever, but uh, it was about to be much more convenient to be based on USB Type-C. And uh, since the device is really portable, 
Unfortunately, the fact it's always grounded to a wire uh, makes me think I, I can't really call it truly portable. But that really is all to be criticized, and obviously none of these drawbacks are really critical. Xiaomi are known for good software support, and I'm sure that longevity of this one will be up to par with most Mi TVs. Furthermore, the platform used here is exactly the same as for most Mi TV Pro models from the past year or two, so yeah, that's a really good catch. Very smart, but also very bright and capable for a projector. If you need something even brighter, the Pro version has similar performance and more powerful LED. As you can see, it's not capable of fully replacing a good nice big TV screen, but if you want to stay portable, save some space and just avoid using or buying a TV, it's an excellent solution. So, if there is something else that I haven't covered throughout this episode and you would like to know about the Xiaomi Smart Projector 2, head over to the comments and ask or just let me know what you think of it. Been very refreshing to finally test something with Android TV again after such a long time and I hope you enjoyed as well. Please take a moment, support the channel, hit the like button if well deserved, send me some virtual smiles and enjoy your day. Bye!